welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and an update on some of the painting projects I've been working on. Um, so I've changed it up a bit this last few days um, in terms of what I've been painting, just to sort of keep keep my mojo, keep my uh, motivation alive. Um, I've mentioned before on this channel that uh, I find the easiest way to keep um, kind of motivated to paint through my stash of figures is to um, swap around. Uh, jump around projects. So I usually have a couple of projects on the go. Plus I have uh, an ongoing project that just doesn't really finish, which is to add English Civil War figures to my um, Royalist Army. Um, and so that's what I've been working on this last week or so. Um, so I can't remember I've mentioned before, but um, I'm thinking my Royalist Army is going to be themed around... Um, a force that operated in the Welsh marshes, um, marches, sorry, uh, area of, of of England, sort of around the Shropshire area because I love the area, I love the county of Shropshire. Um, really, always love going up there. And um, there was a large Irish contingent within the forces that operated there for the Royalist side. Um, and I thought, right, let's do that. Now, I don't think they were significantly looking different to other um, royalist formations that were there. Um, but I, I wanted mine to, so it's my forces, so I'm going to do it. So I had in the stash a couple of boxes of the Warlords 28mm uh, metal uh, Montrose Irish sets. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to use those two boxes to, to create one large unit of pike and shot for my... Um, Shropshire Army. Um, so that's what I've done. So these are the um, ragtag uh, pikemen. Um, now, on scale size, so um, normally my uh, pike and shot regiments are 16 pikemen and two wings of 12 um, musketeers. Um, but because these are going to be a large unit, I've double, I've increased the size of the pikemen to 24 figures and the wings of uh, musketeers will be 16 figures each. So quite a lot bigger. So obviously these are the pike. Now, because they're based on the Montrose box sets, um, and Montrose was a colorful figure, and if you're into the English Civil War period, um, I would certainly urge you read up about Montrose. He was a fascinating character. Um, he was made Major General of Scotland uh, by, uh, by the King and um, sent to, to pacify and control uh, Scotland, um, which at that time was in some upheaval, lots of armed forces around, and he was given two uh, guns and a, a, a squadron of cavalry to do it. <laughs> now, he was aided by um, three large regiments of foot from Ireland that came over to support him, um, so he wasn't quite alone with just his guns and his cavalry. But the Irish foot were extremely effective troops. They were almost entirely musket-armed, um, veterans of earlier wars, very effective unit, and um, they had some considerable uh, success in Scotland. So I won't go into the whole story, but the reason why the, um, the, the Warlord figures have so many figures that are armed with sort of these guys here with muskets um, as, as clubs um, is because they came across to England or to Scotland with uh, very few pike, uh, and they didn't. They sort of collected pikes as they as they won battles uh, from the fleeing um, Scots that they beat, um, and eventually were able to sort of form the the normal proportion of pike to to shot that a um, a, a formation in those days would have had. Um, so the Warlord Pack comes with a number of these guys using their their. Um, their muskets as a as a club. Now, if you've ever seen reenactors' muskets of this period, these things are seriously big, heavy pieces of wood, and and you really wouldn't want to get clubbed around the head by one of them. Um, so you know, probably didn't lessen their um their melee ability, but certainly lessened their reach ability. Anyway, so that's why the figures are as, as they are. Um, but I think it adds a bit of spice and a bit of colour to the to the unit I'm planning to field, which is why I've done it. So I've interspersed some of these guys who have got their um, muskets in the clubbing position with the guys who actually have muskets. Um, there's a guy with um, 
bagpipes here at the back. Um, the I've again tried to bring the Irish theme through the unit um, so that they're un identifiable easily enough. They've all got, or several of them have got these sort of uh, cloth caps on, um, which I've used a green on, uh, just again to bring the theme together. And you can see some of them got sort of a, a kind of tartan, um, which again I've used a sort of green based tartan. So they were green and they've got little stripes of, um, yeah, little lines of, uh, of dark blue and then obviously the yellow. Uh, through them, which I think kind of works okay from distance. Don't get too close to them. I uh, would not claim to be a tartan painter of any description. Um, so yeah, nice unit. Really good fun to do. A uh, bit of variety. You can generally with the English Civil War, you can use fairly muted colours, um, and there isn't really a uniform as such. So um, not in most cases. There are a few exceptions to that, but there aren't really for the for the run of the mill units um, so that makes it fun you can just sort of you know dib 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 through your paint collection and um, and, and stick whatever colors you fancy within reason on them so that's what I've done it's a real mixed bag there of blues and greens and browns and um, other shades you have some reds in there as well ready browns um, with a heavy wash of uh, uh, non oil over the top and then sort of picking out some of the highlights and then a dry brush over the top so yeah, I like the effect. I think they've come out really nicely. So that's the pipeman. And here is the musketeers, or first wing of the musketeers. Um, again, all metal warlord figures from those two box sets um, that I got, Montrose uh, Irish Infantry. Um, not much more to say about these fellas. I've just kept the colours very um, muted, really, I guess. Um, again, I've tried to, where they've got the cloth caps, paint them green and some of these guys have got tartan on as well and they're actually really quite nice figures I did, I did enjoy painting them um, English Civil War is always fun to do because there's no particular uniforms so you kind of um, you just go with your gut feeling on them um, which is always fun I think and especially if you, you're looking for a bit of variety in what you're painting the ability to just sort of crack on and do what you fancy uh, is very good so yeah, so that's the first wing. And here's the second wing of muskets uh, for the Irish Irish Brigade. Um, mixed bag here because making up the two box sets uh, of the Warlord's Metals didn't give me enough muskets for two wings of 16. As I say, I wanted to make this a large unit. Um, 24 pike and two, two wings of 16 musketeers each. Um, so I bought a couple of packs of um, uh, front rank, no first call, first call musketeers. Um, I got the ones with this with this um, well with caps and also the soft caps like the other ones. Um, what I neglected to check was I got them in sort of march order like this um, and really I should have had them in more dramatic dramatic poses and they would have fitted in quite nicely with that uh, with the rest of the the unit but no matter it is what it is um, so basically as I say that will give me 16 uh, a, a pike block of 24 and two musket blocks of 16 for that regiment which I think um, will symbolize the the large size of the unit really nicely um, yeah quite happy with that quite happy how they came out Again, the same process, um, greens for the for the berries, the soft caps, just to sort of accentuate the Irishness of them. Um, the guys here, they've got um, sort of some sort of tartan um, cloak type affair around them. Um, I've just done with my, my three foot tartan, which I think uh, works at three foot. Don't get too close because you realise it doesn't, isn't actually tartan at all. But it looks all right. So that's it. That's that unit done. If I'm clever, I'll show you a picture now of the whole regiment deployed because it doesn't fit on the turntable, so I'll have to take a separate picture. But I'll put that in now. So also some artillery support for the um, Irish, well, for the Royalists generally. Uh, this is a Warlord, I think it was a light gun from what I remember. Um, from their pack, um, metal figures, uh, metal gun, metal uh, crew members, 
Um, I really like them. I think they, their English Civil War guns are absolutely superb. I really think they come out beautifully. Um, I've kept it really simple again, fairly um, vanilla kind of uniforms. Well, not really uniforms at all, just a mixed bag of sort of uh, muted tones and what have you. Um, the gun itself, um, I think I used Snakebite Brown on the limber, on the actual, sorry, not limber, on the actual um, wooden bits of the, of the gun. And then um, I used Brass on the barrel and then with a, a judicious uh, dark wash over the top and then a bit of a dry brush over the top as well so it gives you that kind of yeah kind of like it that sort of brassy bronzy color for the gun um the crew members actually are really expressive as well really like them so yeah another gun for the royalist forces whenever we manage to get out which might be soon might be soon Looking forward to actually getting some gaming in this year. And then finally, um, I continued with my Brunswick addiction, Napoleonic. Um, say I'm sort of trying to build a, an army that I could play in sharp practice, um, just a pure Brunswick force, because the two fat lardies um, did one of their, I think it was a summer one. Um, anyway, one of their annual uh, magazines, which had um, scenarios and lists for the Hundred Days War, and there's a Brunswick force in it, and I've always had a thing about Brunswicks and Nassau's, and there's a Nassau one as well. So funny enough, I'm building a, a Nassau um, sharp practice force. But anyway, I've already showed you uh, in the last painting update video um, my painting of the third Brunswick line infantry, um, and also the gun. So the gun in sharp practice has a five-man crew, so I bought an extra crewman here from Eagle Miniatures. These are all Eagles. I also need a junior officer and a drummer is always useful uh, in sharp practice because uh, it increases their ability to maintain control of the troops and also extends the command radius of the, of the uh, officers or the big men as they are in sharp practice. So those are, say, Eagle Miniature figures. Uh, they're okay. They're always a little bit weedy, I think, eagle figures, but the beauty of them is they do them singly, and that's really handy. And up front, uh, we've got uh, the Duke of Brunswick himself with his pipe um, and his adjutant here, then another officer uh, who could be used with the force, depending on whether I play uh, shot practice or even fit him in with the um, uh, black powder armies. Fascinating story about the Duke of Brunswick. Uh, he was obviously the son of the original Duke of Brunswick who um, was killed um, in Prussian service against the Austria, uh, against the French. Um, and um, that's why they wore the black um, uniforms. It was in memory of the old Duke. Um, and they also had skull and crossbones on their, helm on their shakos. Um, the young Duke um, went into service with everybody else um, in the British Army, was at Quatre Bras, and um, sadly he was killed at Quatre Bras, uh, leading his troops. Um, they were wavering a bit, um, because largely by that point, uh, as I said in the last video, the Brunswickers were, had been replaced by conscripts and um, somewhat dubious quality of troops. Um, not many of the old veterans from uh, the original Brunswick Corps uh, were still alive and those that there were had been spread amongst the different regiments to try and provide a sort of core of, of regular trained men and a lot of the men at Quatre Bras and Waterloo indeed were not very well trained so he um, apparently rather nonchalantly walked up and down in front of his um, uh, Brunswick troops who were under heavy fire at Quatre Bras uh, smoking his pipe and unfortunately was hit and killed and that was the end of the Brunswick, uh, Duke of Brunswick so there you go, that's what I've been working on. I hope everyone is staying safe and staying well, and I hope that all your projects are come, coming together well. And um, if you like this, give it a like. Uh, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, please. And I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.